Hello everyone, Paleo Nerd here with what should be my last video about Jurassic Fight Club, at least for a while. After making several videos pointing out all the problems this show has, I figured I'd shift my focus to giving constructive criticism. And by that, I mean I'm essentially just going through the entire series and talking about what I would have made different in a completely hypothetical situation in which I would be placed in charge of remaking this show so that it isn't horrible. Because believe it or not, I do believe that this show could have been good if the people making it were actually competent. Since this video will probably be long enough as it is, I will not be repeating everything I said in my analysis videos on this series, so if you somehow haven't, please watch every single one of my analysis videos before you watch this. That way you know where I'm coming from when I'm trying to make improvements to every episode of this series, and you have some context for a lot of my major criticisms of this show. Before I get to discussing the changes for each episode, I'll start with changes I'd make to the overall format of the series. One rule I will bring up is that I will be keeping each episode as close to the original version as possible while still being accurate. This means that the discovery each episode is based on will stay the same, as well as the setting and animals featured. The only exception to the animals is if the original omitted an animal that really should have been there, or if an animal that was featured wasn't actually present at the site. And deep sea killers will likely be the exception to the rule about the setting and fossil discovery, which I will explain later. First in the changes, every single episode will have the animals featured be given accurate designs, so I won't be saying that 12 separate times. Second, the series will focus more on the actual fossil discoveries rather than said discoveries being used to justify dinosaurs fighting each other, using forensic evidence to show what might have happened. Third, each episode will have multiple different scenarios presented throughout the episode instead of just one fight at the very end in order to show different ideals about what could have happened rather than showing only one version like the original. This way it leaves each discovery more open to interpretation by the audience and they can choose which scenario they think is most likely based on the evidence. In the original, other possibilities may have been brought up, but they were usually shot down almost immediately, and the final fight at the end is usually presented as the only valid interpretation of the fossils, which isn't really scientific. Fourth, many of the episodes would likely have their names changed to better fit the new direction. I don't have a lot of ideas as to what the new names would be, so if any of you have ideas, you're more than welcome to post them in the comments below. Oh, and I would also remove the annoying host who loudly states things that are either stupidly obvious or incredibly inaccurate, as well as the out-of-place narrator who says similar things. I would also actually respect the opinions of the paleontologists I brought on to consult rather than treating their consultations like suggestions and just pretending that they don't matter. And whoever it was that hated Ceratosaurus so fucking much would be fired. Seriously, to whoever that was, what the hell did Ceratosaurus ever do to you? With that out of the way, let's get to the individual episodes. Episode 1, Cannibal Dinosaur. This one I'm going to leave the title the same. I have talked a bit about how to improve this episode, but now I'm going to go more in depth with this and make it more educational. This episode would focus heavily on the Majungasaurus fossils with Majungasaurus tooth marks on them, as the original only briefly mentioned them and then used them as an excuse to show two Majungasaurus fight to the death. It would then discuss the inaccurate idea that Majungasaurus was an active cannibal, and bring up evidence of interspecies violence with other theropods like Tyrannosaurids, Dromaeosaurids, and Allosaurids to debunk this. 
The first scenario presented would be an inaccurate version of these events, depicting the traditional idea of a Majungasaurus violently killing another Majungasaurus and then eating it before presenting a more realistic take on what actually happened, with one Majungasaurus feeding on the carcass of another. The third main scenario presented would also show an alternative explanation and depict a territorial dispute between a male and female Majungasaurus as a homage to the original fight, with the exception that the original premise of a male trying to kill a mother's baby is absent and the fight doesn't end in death. The episode could also go more in depth with Majungasaurus' feeding habits, even including scenes of it hunting other dinosaurs like Rapetosaurus, which was likely its main food source. Other Maivirano animals like Mashikasaurus, Mahayangasuchus, Rahonavis, and Bielzobufo could also make cameos. Meanwhile, the real thing only showed stock footage of Tenontosaurus from Episode 3, even though they lived on an entirely separate continent millions of years earlier. So yeah, this version would be more educational, teaching people about Majungasaurus and how it may have lived. Next up, T-Rex Hunter. One of the biggest flaws of the original episode was that it did a poor job of addressing the controversy surrounding Nano Tyrannus. Sure, it brought up the idea that Nano Tyrannus could just be a juvenile Tyrannosaurus, but it pretty much just goes, Ah, eh, fuck that. Let's just spend the rest of the episode going under the assumption that Nano Tyrannus is a real animal. In my version, the Nano Tyrannus controversy would be one of the main focuses of the episode, with multiple valid points brought up for each side. As a result, different scenarios could be presented to show different possibilities as to how the juvenile in the fossil discovery was killed. One would have a Nano Tyrannus as the killer, however, instead of the bullshit getting rid of the competition excuse, this scenario would show the Nano Tyrannus kill the juvenile for food while the parents leave to hunt. The episode could also bring up the topic of how Tyrannosaurus raised their young, discussing whether only one parent or both parents cared for the offspring and the implications of each method. Other scenarios for how the juvenile died would include being killed by an older Tyrannosaurus, one for a sub-adult and one for a fully grown adult. The episode could also explore how Nano Tyrannus could have fit into the Hell Creek ecosystem if it is a distinct genus, showing it interacting with other animals, hunting Pachycephalosaurus and Juvenile Edmontosaurus. The episode would likely take a mostly neutral stance on the Nano Tyrannus debate, presenting each side's debates in a purely objective manner. But at the end, it would likely lead more towards synonymy with Tyrannosaurus. Overall, this episode has potential to educate people about one of the most controversial dinosaurs ever discovered, as well as present new information about the super popular Tyrannosaurus Rex. My version of gang killers would center around the relationship between Deinonychus and Tenontosaurus presenting the traditional view that Deinonychus hunted Tenontosaurus in cooperative packs like wolves. However, the episode would serve to debunk and look at this view more realistically, bringing up a more plausible scenario for the fossil sites, that the Deinonychus were scavenging on a Tenontosaur carcass and then killed and ate each other while fighting over it. The animated segment depicting this would draw parallels with the feeding behavior of Komodo dragons, which have been observed killing each other in mass feeding frenzies. The episode would also show the new model of Deinonychus as a mostly solitary predator hunting smaller animals, even exploring the raptor prey restraint model. It could bring up the possibility of Deinonychus hunting in groups, but would likely portray such groups more like a mob of Komodo dragons and a pack of wolves. 
Meanwhile, Tenotosaurus would get a little more spotlight, and the episode would go in depth with subverting the trope of the wimpy herbivores by showcasing Tenotosaurus as a dangerous and well-armed animal more than capable of defending itself. Perhaps including a scene similar to the original fight where a group of Deinonychus try to take down a Tenotosaurus, but this time the Dromaeosaurs fail. Another scenario could include a similar hunt where the Deinonychus are able to take down a Tenotosaurus, but it's a juvenile or an old or weak individual. Other animals like Acrocanthosaurus, Sauroposidon, and Zephyrosaurus could also make cameos with throughout, with one scene showing a herd of Tenotosaurus fighting off an Acrocanthosaurus, and another showing Deinonychus using raptor prey restraint to kill a Zephyrosaurus. This episode could really have been used to debunk many misconceptions about both Deinonychus and Tenotosaurus, and it's a pity that we ended up with something much, much worse. Bloodiest Battle is one of the few episodes that I actually have an idea for what the new name would be. I'm currently thinking something like Dino Death Trap, but if you have a better idea, be sure to let me know. Anyway, this episode would focus extensively on the Cleveland Lloyd Dinosaur Quarry, specifically discussing what actually happened there. There is the traditional hypothesis that prey animals got trapped in sticky mud and attracted predators, which also got stuck and then attracted even more predators. Then there is also another hypothesis that the massive amount of fossils is the result of a massive drought in which herbivores would be brought together at the lake before dying off due to malnutrition as they run out of plants surrounding the lake. The herbivores would then attract carnivores with Allosaurus eventually driving all other predators away until all that's left is Allosaurus and they start cannibalizing each other. This second hypothesis has recently gained a lot of favor and is probably the most likely scenario. And if you want to learn more, just go and watch your Dinosaurs Are Wrongs episode on Allosaurus. The four dinosaurs from the original episode, Allosaurus, Stegosaurus, Ceratosaurus, and Camarasaurus, would still appear, as well as additional Cleveland Lloyd dinosaurs like Comptosaurus, Solurus, Martiosaurus, and Apatosaurus. The episode would go a little in depth with how these animals normally live, but it would focus mainly on the predator trap and drought hypotheses regarding the Cleveland Lloyd site, saving most of the stuff regarding normal life for these animals for Hunter Becomes Hunted. Deep Sea Killers would have the biggest change of all the episodes. Since the original episode wasn't based on any actual fossil discovery, it was more of a who would win in a fight scenario. Rather than sticking to one setting, this episode would have several different settings throughout the Miocene and early Pliocene to show how successful Ototus Megalodon was during its reign as apex predator of the oceans. The main setting would be the Pisco Formation in Peru, but other localities would include the Pietro Lexis Formation in Italy, the Beshto Formation in Japan, and the Pinjor Formation in India. Some segments would show megalodon hunting prey like baleen whales, while others would explore how it interacted with other marine predators at the time, particularly other sharks, predatory whales, and crocodilians. Specifically, the Pisco segments would showcase Leviathan and Acrophysetter, while Pietra Lysis would showcase Zygophysetter, and Besso would showcase Brigmophysetter. Other possible competitors that would be explored would include Ototus chubutensis, Purosaurus, and other Gavialids like Pisco Gavialis and Ramphosuchus. For each of these candidates, the episode would essentially explain how Megalodon triumphed over all of them. It was much larger than Ototus chubutensis, as well as most raptorial sperm whales with the exception of Leviathan, which went extinct during the late Miocene or early Pliocene, while Megalodon would survive until a few million years afterward. 
As for the crocs, Purusaurus was primarily a freshwater croc, although it could possibly live in brackish waters, making a confrontation with Megalodon possible, but very unlikely. And the giant Gaviolids were adapted for hunting smaller prey, meaning they would have rarely interacted with Megalodon. While Megalodon would outlast Purosaurus, the Gaviolids would manage to outlast the giant shark, with the last of them surviving until the late Pleistocene about 12,000 years ago. Other animals like Thalosochnus, Piscobalania, Urinodelphus, and Paleoparadoxia would also make cameos during these segments. There would then be a final segment surrounding the extinction of Atotus Megalodon, debunking the claims that it still exists, and showing how the climate change during the early Pliocene affected the whales Megalodon preyed on, as well as new competition with great white sharks and orcas. If you want to learn more about how Megalodon went extinct, be sure to watch my video on why Megalodon isn't still alive today, as this episode would make many of the same points. Now for Hunted Becomes Hunted, which I will be currently renaming as Predator Playground. To help differentiate Predator Playground from Dino Death Trap, I would make this episode focus more on normal life for the animals in the Morrison Formation, when they aren't being killed off by massive droughts or predator traps. Specifically, this episode would focus on the interactions between the different theropods of the Morrison, and how they were able to coexist with each other. Allosaurus and Ceratosaurus would obviously be in it, as well as Torvosaurus and Solaris would be recycled from Dino Death Trap as the small carnivore. Most of the episode will, will center around showcasing the different niches each theropod would occupy and how they may have avoided competition with each other, and other dinosaurs like Stegosaurus, Dryosaurus, and Brontosaurus would also make cameos. Oh, and Ceratosaurus would actually be treated with some fucking respect for once, in case anyone asks. Biggest Killers is probably the episode that would change the least out of all of them, with the only major changes being that every predator shown in the entire show would get at least mentioned once, and more of a point would be made about the final message at the end, that nature is the true biggest killer, since all the predators showcased went extinct due to some significant change in their climates or ecosystems. I would also try harder to make this a recurring theme in the series as a whole, which the original series didn't really do that well, especially with the episodes that came after Biggest Killers. Raptor's Last Stand probably wouldn't have many changes beyond those made in other episodes, although one major addition would be some segments showing normal life in Utah Raptor's environment when it's not in drought. One of the biggest problems with the fights that I don't think I noticed before is that since most of the fights are justified by some sort of drought or climate change, Jurassic Fight Club tended to only show the animals in those situations, giving the audience the impression that this is how these animals normally acted. By showing the environment of these creatures as it normally is, it makes it easier for the viewer to understand that the animals are only acting aggressively due to the change in the environment, not because that's how they naturally are. For example, if a Eutoraptor is shown attacking a Gastonia, the viewer will realize it's only doing so out of desperation, not because it's a colossal idiot that just attacks whatever it sees. Eutoraptor and Gastonia would be the main animals in the drought segments, but in segments showing normal life, other dinosaurs like Ceratosaurus, Hippodraco, Yurgofuchia, and Martharaptor would appear as well. As one of the worst episodes of the entire series, if not the worst episode, Ice Age Monsters obviously needs a lot of changes. The main focus would be the Pleistocene ecosystem and the animals that were part of it, as well as how so many skeletons ended up in the natural trap cave in Wyoming. 
The American lion, short-faced bear, and bison would still appear, with the addition of other animals like the dire wolf, Colombian mammoth, American cheetah, horses, camels, and pronghorns. More focus would be placed on the explorations of Natural Trap Cave and of what it could imply about the cause of the Quaternary Mass Extinction Event. Several hypotheses would be brought up, including climate change, human hunting, hyperdiseases, and second-order predation, with arguments for and against each hypothesis as they're brought up. The episode probably wouldn't make any concrete conclusions, perhaps even proposing a combination of different hypotheses. Finally, and most importantly of all, at no point during the episode will there be a scene of a bear throwing a fucking lion into a cave. Although there are similar bone bed sites that could work for River of Death, I'm going to stick with the Pipestone Creek site that the original episode used. First off, while I did say I wouldn't bring this up every time, I do feel the need to stress that in my version of this episode, Pachyrhinosaurus would look a thousand times better than the absolutely horrible design in the actual show. The Albertosaurus from the original episode would be replaced with an unnamed Albertosaurine, although it would still be based on Albertosaurus. And other animals like Edmontosaurus regalis, Boreonychus, and an unnamed Troodontid would be included as well when showing normal life in the Wapiti Formation. Pachyrhinosaurus would be the main focus of the episode, being the most well-known dinosaur from the site, and most of the runtime would be dedicated to the cause of the Pipestone Creek bone bed, primarily using the hypothesis that the Pachyrhinosaurus were killed in a flood. There would also be the aftermath of the flood, with predators like Tyrannosaurus, Dromaeosaurids, and Troodontids feasting on the remains, explaining the presence of teeth at the site. Predators likely wouldn't be involved during the actual flood in order to emphasize on the point that nature was the true killer, something which very well could have been a recurring theme in this series if the creators of the show weren't busy coming up with different ways for dinosaurs to kill each other and actually bother trying to make sure their audience actually learned something. Raptors vs. T-Rex would also get a name change, Titan of Hell Creek since Edmontosaurus would be the main animal that this episode focuses on. After all, the entire premise of this episode was based on a mummified Edmontosaurus tale, and the poor guy doesn't even get to be in the title of his own fucking episode. Just goes to show how the series treats its herbivores. In my version, Edmontosaurus wouldn't just be a giant wuss that walks around waiting to be killed, but an interesting and dangerous animal in its own right, more than capable of fighting the largest predators of its environment and winning. The segments surrounding the tail would likely depict a similar scenario to the one I suggested in my analysis of this episode, that the tail was separated from the rest of the carcass during the decomposition process with the bite marks being the result of scavengers, like the Acroraptor. Tyrannosaurus, Dakotaraptor, and Pachycephalosaurus would also make cameo appearances throughout. Like biggest killers, Armageddon likely wouldn't have much change, aside from some additional fauna, as well as removing animals that weren't actually present during the KPG extinction, like Albertosaurus and Pachyrhinosaurus. Another change would be with the Madagascar segment. Rather than being hit by a tsunami, which would have been physically impossible due to the position of the continents at that time, Madagascar would be shown affected by the eruption of the Dekhan traps in India. Speaking of India, this episode would also have some segments added centering around the dinosaurs that lived in India at the time, like Rashosaurus, Isosaurus, and Indosuchus. It's amazing that India has a fossil formation filled with dinosaurs which dates to the very end of the Cretaceous, yet no documentary seem to actually use it because they're always busy using Hell Creek. 
It likely wouldn't cost that much for extra models either. Rajasaurus and Indosuchus, for instance, could simply just use slightly modified Mentogosaurus models, although Isosaurus would likely need a new model. This episode could also serve as a retrospective for the rest of the series, reflecting on the success of the dinosaurs throughout the Mesozoic era and giving the theme of nature being the biggest killer a big payoff by showing how even the mighty dinosaurs couldn't reign supreme forever. Then, of course, it would have the classic ending where it talks about how birds are actually dinosaurs and that they still live to this day, which I strangely don't recall seeing in the actual show. Although, given the naked dromaeosaurs, I wouldn't be surprised if the people involved are in some strange denial that birds are living dinosaurs, because people like that still exist and yet are somehow intelligent enough to survive to adulthood. While the original version of this show very much deserved to be cancelled and never get any continuation whatsoever, this version I made could very well be deserving of at least one additional season. Some obvious episodes would include one about the fighting dinosaurs fossil with Velociraptor and Protoceratops, as well as a proper Tyrannosaurus vs Triceratops episode. Other ideas I've had include an episode about the Paluxy River track, sowing a theropod chasing a sauropod, the Dinictus skull with Hyenodon bite marks on it, cave lions versus cave bears, and maybe even one about the big owl specimen. I don't want to make this video any longer than it currently is, so if you want to hear my ideas for a season 2 for my Jurassic Fight Club remake, be sure to let me know in the comments below and maybe even offer suggestions for potential episodes. That should just about do it for this video, as that's probably the best I can do to turn Jurassic Fight Club from one of the worst documentaries I've ever seen to one that's at least decent. Although if I do come up with any ideas or need to update this, be sure to look in the comments below as I will have likely have a pinned comment down there somewhere for potential updates, as has been kind of the thing for my videos recently. Also, by the way, uh, if you haven't noticed already, be sure to check my past videos and look for any pinned comments as I have been trying to work on adding updates and uh, corrections to my videos through pinned comments. So if I got something wrong in the video, then, uh, then I won't be misinforming anyone. I really wish this was the version we could have actually ended up with instead of what we got. It just goes to show how much wasted potential Jurassic Fight Club had. It really could have been so much more, but the people in charge chose to make this series a dumb awesome bro gore fest disguised as a documentary. Honestly, I would like for this version to actually get made, but realistically it would probably be monstrously expensive, and History Channel is probably too busy jerking itself off with bullshit shows like Ancient Aliens and The Curse of Oak Island to actually try and make something intelligent and good. Like, honestly, half the stuff history airs nowadays consists of reality shows that have jack shit to do with actual history, and the other half consists of crackhead conspiracy theories like humans being ape-alien hybrids, or dinosaurs coexisting with humans before being killed off by aliens using nuclear bombs so that humans could reign as the dominant species. Yes, those are actual claims that Ancient Aliens has made. So, for now, this infinitely superior version of Jurassic Fight Club exists solely in this video and a journal entry on my DeviantArt account. Who knows, maybe one day History Channel will get clean and fire everyone making the terrible programs and make some good ones that are actually worth watching and aren't trying to plant conspiracy theories in our heads. And if that day comes, if History Channel ever decides to get their shit together and remake one particular show that aired over a decade ago, they'll know who to call. Thanks to all of you who have been with me since the start of this long-ass journey of me criticizing the fuck out of this god-awful show. 
and to all of you who could be here to watch the end of that same journey, because I am finally done with this shit fest of a show. Now that Jurassic Fight Club's all done, I hope you are excited to watch me analyze the infamous documentary series Monsters Resurrected, starting with the very first episode, Terror Bird. This is PaleoNerd, signing out. <laughs>